Hey, how you doing? This is Kitch, and you are watching me play Factorio. Welcome to the start of a brand new Factorio series, where we're going to be doing stuff just a little bit different uh, than I normally do in a Factorio playthrough. Um, there are some concepts and ideas and builds in Factorio that I want to explore. Um, things that I've always been curious about, but have I, I've either tried kind of half-hearted to do, uh, or... Uh, never really tried because I thought they would be too hard. And I thought it would be fun to kind of explore some of these concepts. Um, these are things that I've seen people do on the forums or in, in discords or in um, on Reddit. Things that they've posted about. Things that I thought looked really cool. Maybe not always practical. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very pac practical factorial player. <laughs> um, but, you know, just things I, I never really tried. So um, we're going to do that. Um, I am loaded up in a mod called creative mode uh and it's uh kind of like the the free mode or god mode whatever it is in, in in vanilla factorio uh where everything is infinite we can get whatever we want um we, everything's unlimited uh blueprints if we were to make a blueprint uh it would build instantly uh things like this really help the construction planner takes all the stuff away um very 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 nice and it also has a number of items over here that are are very nice um for example um, down here, I am using an active energy source, uh, which is producing all the power that we need uh, to run all of this stuff. Uh, we have these matter sources that uh, basically just generate items on a belt for us. Um, th things that make it very easy to to do to do some of this stuff. Uh, just kind of play around with designs uh, without having to muck all of it with all that mining and, and things like that. Yes, it's cheating. Um, that's kind of the idea. Uh, we're in here, and we're gonna we're gonna build some things and test some concepts out. So um, let's go ahead. Uh, we'll roll the intro, and uh, we'll get started in playing with a little bit of science. So yeah, in this episode, I want to take a look at uh, an alternative science build that I've been kind of curious about doing. Um, over here, what we have is a build that I use all of the time. Um, it's simple. It's very effective. And I like the fact that um, it works without using long-handed inserters or underground belts. It's just really simple, really straightforward. Um, I've always used it. Um, all your main scientists coming in here in undergrounds, um, these inserters pull them into this lab. And then that just daisy chains on out. Really nice. Um, very easy to set up and um, extremely convenient uh, for, for your belt placement. Uh, let's just continue researching things. Um, it has a couple of flaws, though. Uh, one, it's not the most compact thing in the world. Uh, granted, that leaves some room for beacons and stuff in the later game. But uh, beacons set up, you're not going to want to do this. You're going to do things that you're going to do things a little different, I think. Um, the other big disadvantage to it is if you look at this guy on the end, um, he is starved a lot for science. That's just the nature of daisy chaining. You can kind of see the blinking as it goes on. Um, it's just not the most efficient uh, build in the world. Very effective, but, but not very efficient. Uh, but enough about this build. Um, I want to look at experimenting with some sushi science builds. And uh, if you're not familiar with the concept, the idea is we might do something like that right there. Have all our science labs in the middle. And then we have a single belt uh, going all the way around like this. And then we just have all of our sciences just going and sharing a belt going all the way around. Uh, so instead of four... Uh, belts coming in with seven different sciences on it. We're going to get those seven sciences and put them on this belt and they're just going to travel around and around and as these guys need something uh, when it comes by, they'll just grab it. Like a uh, sushi belt. Right? Uh, creative name, huh? <laughs> um, so there's a potential problem with using a sushi belt in that um, if you're not using stuff consistently all the time uh, you have the potential for it to back up and deadlock. Um, for example, um, taking a look at... Uh, let's look at cannon shell damage. It uses all of the sciences except purple science. So it's possible, if you researched that long enough, that you could find yourself in a situation where this belt was completely filled up with purple science, 
uh, drowning out the possibility for other things to get to get on the belt. And you would get in a deadlock because these guys could no longer get the other sciences that they need because the belt's all purple. Um, it can happen on a long enough timeline. Uh, so it's something you just kind of got to watch for and uh, try to prevent. Uh, one way to help prevent that is to make a belt loop like this uh, where the, the items on the belt are just constantly always moving to give, give chance for that purple science to get out of the way. You still have the problem where it can completely fill up. So the other thing you've got to do is somehow limit the amount of items that make it onto the belt and control that amount so that you don't get an overwhelming amount of purples or an overwhelming amount of the gray science or, or whichever science it is. You gotta, you gotta be able to control it somehow. Now I've glanced around a little bit on the interwebs, uh, looking around for ideas uh, to see if there's any like really straightforward takes. And I found some things that are really simple, uh, not not really simple, but but not but low tech. Let's call it that. Uh, ideas using splitters and things like that that look like they work out pretty pretty well. Um, and I've seen some things that are super duper complex, like extremely complex with a lot of features. I'm aiming for something more in the middle. Uh, so these, this is the idea I came up with. Again, um, whenever I do a video like this, I do, I do welcome feedback. Um, I'm not saying that this is the best way to do it or a good way to do it even. Um, it's just kind of the way that um, I've been thinking so far. So I, I'd appreciate any feedback on uh, better, th better ways to do it, uh, worse ways to do it, uh, what, whatever you got, uh, do, do let me know down below. I would, I would very much appreciate it. Um, so yeah, my idea, uh, my, my take on the, on the, on the sushi belt, and I'm sure this has probably come up before, uh, I, I didn't see it immediately, but it seems like it's a, a pretty practical way to do it. Um, in the, in a series that I did a while ago called Impractical Factorio, I, I used the concept of a counter quite a bit. Um, I'm going to set a void down here and a matter source up here just to get, just to get some stuff going here. Um, so, uh, let's do like red science. That seems reasonable. Um, this will constantly produce it and this will constantly suck it up. Um, okay. So we can make a, a counter, uh, fairly easily. Uh, ooh, power, 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 power. Let's see how's that going to work. Probably something like that. Um, yeah, we can make a counter fairly easily. All we need is an arith arithmetic combinator. Not my favorite word. Um, uh, arithmetic combinator basically does a mathematical operation on an input coming in and then outputs that result as an output. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, what we can do is take a wire and feed that from the belt to the input of the combinator, which is the bottom side, uh, the, the, the back side away from where the arrows are pointing. Uh, you can see it hooks in right there. And uh, let's set this to read the belt contents and go on. That's going to send that signal into the back of this arithmetic combinator. And you can, if you look over on the right-hand side, there toward the bottom, you can see the one flash of the science every now and then. It's, it's really, really quick. Um, okay, so what we want to do is take that signal coming in. Uh, we can specify a particular uh, input coming in, like a science pack one. We can take that in and then output that amount. And we want to do a mathematical operation on it. We want to add nothing to it. So that actually did nothing. But we're reading in the science pack one signal and outputting that signal after we add zero to it. Pretty, pretty profound, huh? Well, what we can do is take that input signal, uh, that output signal, and rewire it back to the input so that it loops back in, and that makes our counter right there. So if you look on the right-hand side, you can now see a counter going up, just counting the science packs as they go by. Uh, we can make this a little bit more generic by taking this and turning it into the each signal which is kind of like a wild card for each signal coming in, Multi or add that to zero and make that a counter. And that gives us the exact same thing. It just makes it to where it doesn't matter if these are red or green or blue or fish or iron ore, doesn't matter. It's going to just generically count. And uh, we can reset this. I There's probably better ways to do this, but if you just set it to a multiply, it'll multiply the signal by zero, canceling it out, and you can put it back to plus again and it starts counting again. 
All right, so we have a counter. Uh, we also need a way to subtract things that are being pulled off of the line. Um, and we could do that rather easily as well with a, another combinator. Uh, we'll take that arithmetic combinator. We'll put it on the belt, maybe like down here, and hook it into the input. And we'll set it to um, read the belt contents, not enable disable. We just want to read. We don't want to do any logic yet. And we can take that input signal, uh, whatever it is, doesn't matter, give it a wild card, and uh, output it. And the input that comes in, we will multiply it by a negative one. So we're going to add what comes through this combinator or this counter right here. And this is going to subtract what comes out of this one. And if we take the output of that, which is the negative signal there, and put it into the input of this combinator, we now get kind of a stable thing. You can see we're hovering at, at, at 8, 388, 9. Um, if I multiply that by 0, then set it to add again, it should hover around, uh, yeah, negative 1, something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and stop that there. Uh, we'll go ahead and clear this out. And that should put us at 0. Fantastic. And uh, let's put some logic on this one and say we're going to enable disable this when um, the red science packs are less than five. Okay, and put that on there. And we have five science packs. And as soon as these are taken out, we're going to add five more. Watch that, the signal, the way that works. This one subtracts, this one adds, and this logic is making it to where we're always wanting five of these guys on the belt at all times. And I think that's going to work for a sushi belt. Uh, we just keep track of what we're putting on, we keep track of what we're taking out, and um, that gives us uh, a limit of what we need. So I think that is actually going to work. So um, let's give it a shot. Uh, let's give it a try here. Um, let's get some inserters inserting on these science labs. Uh, something like that seems reasonable. Uh, we'll go ahead and power that up. And then we need a way to get our science on here. And I think the best way to do that probably would be with... Um, the belt. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's take it off, like, maybe right there. Uh, put you, like, right there. We'll set you to do red science. Just take, um, just take this whole setup here and copy it, like, right... I don't know. There will be fine. Um, it needs to be powered like that. All right, and uh, then we just need uh, this wire here. No, we need we need we just we just want to count what's being put onto uh, onto the belt. So we need to read that and put that in that signal. We want the enabled condition to be. Um, less than uh, let's see we have 10 labs let's do like 20 that seems reasonable to me okay and that will count until it has 20 uh, going on the belt uh, through that counter and uh, our subtraction instead of taking it off like this whenever it passes through something we want to take it out whenever an inserter picks it up uh, so we can do that by wiring some of these inserters together. Uh, can you guys make it that far? You can. All right, so that will be that red signal going out there. And uh, we want to not enable disable. We want to say none. We just want you to read the hand contents. And I think I want to override the stack size to one just to keep the count a little bit more even. 
and we want to pulse on that. So that's going to send out a pulse signal, making sure that copied did. Uh, we'll just copy it to all these. It'll send out a pulse signal of one every time it grabs uh, an item off of the belt. So this will be our, our great subtractor. And we will want to feed that output into the back right here. And that will be our negative guy. Did that go in right? It did. It will feed into the back. All right. And I think that should work. Right? All the math is correct. So it's exactly the same concept down here, except we're going to be pulling out the inserters instead of this. So let's just uh, let's just see if it does work. It does not. Why not? Why are you not counting? Are we not set right? You're not reading the belt contents. Fantastic. All right. Mistakes in the system. Always, always, always bad. All right, let's try that again. All right, went up to 20, and it stopped. I'm not sure that any of these guys are going to be taking anything off the belt right now. Because we're not researching anything. Let's uh, research something. There we go. They grabbed some, and we added some more. They grab some. We're going to add some more. Grabbing more. Adding more. These guys are going to grab the last ones. And those are going to be on there. It's looking great. That is exactly what I would expect. Alright, so I think now what we need to do is add inputs for the rest of them. So we're going to need one for green science, blue, uh, military, military, uh, purple, yellow, and finally, space, right? Three, four, five, six. All right, and technically, I don't think we need to be there. Okay, uh, well, I guess we can wire that from here, right? Two, three, four, five, six. Um, let's see, is that what we want? I don't think so. I think we'll have to go reset that, uh, because we need it primed to the end. Uh, that's okay. Let's, uh, go ahead and grab all of these guys off the belt, because we're gonna have to reset it all, I believe. Um, alright, so this one's going to be green science. This one's going to be blue science. Uh, we should probably alternate belt sides too. Uh, let's do gray, do purple, do yellow, and uh, let's do space science. All right, and probably one thing that's going to set this off as well is getting the stuff stuck in there. Uh, so what we can do is do something silly like fish and uh, put them in output priority on the right. So that way only fish will move right and we won't get the little uh, science files stuck here, which is what we do not want. All right, let's uh, go ahead and pick up some of this extra stuff. I just want it to be even even-y as possible. Okay. Um, all right, you're going to be not red, but green. Uh, you are going to be blue, are going to be black, are going to be uh, purple, yellow, and white. Very nice. All right, we'll multiply that by zero to, uh, to even it out and grab our belts here. And let's just see if this works. Okay. 
getting a little hung up here on the splitters. If it'd be worth it to go ahead and do something like that to try to push that stuff out faster. Oh, I've got everything going on one side of the belt. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'd probably want to alternate that a little bit. It's fine for now, though. But it's definitely working. Uh, definitely working indeed. Uh, what if we did uh, something like... That, just to kind of balance the belt out. Yeah, that's silly. Uh, the better way would be to alternate these so they get on better si both sides of the belt. And now our counts are going to be off. Make sure they get back on there. Actually, you know what we could do is just put a generic chest. Oh, or we could just not worry about it. Uh, that's one way to do it. All right, I think I think that works. I think that works. Um, okay, so let's um, let's uh, let's see if we can't do do some improving here. I'm I'm in I'm I, I want to definitely not leave it like that. Um, it could be could be much better. Um, all right, so let's see. What do we need to do here? We need to set you to be on the other side of the belt, I believe. Go and clean that up. Uh, is that the way that works? If we take that one off, yeah, okay. Now, now they're alternating. All right, you be on the other side. And you be on the other side. There we go. I think that'll work out a lot better. And uh, one thing I want to do here is set a constant combinator down here. And uh, let's see. I don't want that going through the combinator because I think that'll mess things up. So let's just run it through here. With a different color wire so it doesn't go back and it, it doesn't automatically increase. And I want to set this to uh, maybe like a letter A. And currently it's 20. All right, and instead of uh, this less than an actual number, I wanna set it less than A. So that way we have a variable here that we can control if we want to increase or decrease the amount that we send. We can do that right there. Uh, do I want this all to be red? I think I do. Whoa, what you doing there, man? Don't do that. Hopefully, that will make that all mixed together a lot faster. All right, we got science in there. That'll be just fine. Um, all right, so we started out with A equals 20. I think that'll be fine. Uh, let's multiply that by zero just to reset it. Okay, our counter is at zero. Okay, uh, we need to research something. Fantastic. That's going to pull those out and add those things to the line. What you waiting on? You're waiting on the white science, and it's coming on the way. All right, that's fantastic. And we can take this at any point, and let's say we want to do 30 now. And 
that'll keep that signal at a constant 30. Oh yeah, you can look over here now. We can see all of our counts being taken on, being put on, staying at a constant 30. Fantastic. So yeah, um, that's my take on uh, Sushi Belt Science. Um, I think there's probably some improvements that could be done here and there. Um, I, I like this design because it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's more complicated than not doing it, but, um, it's, it's very simple in that it's using a very simple counter, uh, and subtractor in order to maintain the amount. It keeps the constant amount on the belt and, uh, it doesn't deadlock, which is what we don't want. Uh, but yeah, I'd be very interested to uh, hear about your designs, uh, ideas uh, for creating sushi belt things. Um, I'd be very interested to hear those. I can see, I can see a lot of interesting uses for this. Uh, not only for science. Science is one place where it makes a lot of sense because we're taking basically six belts. I'm sorry, seven belts and uh, combining it all into one. Uh, with, with one inserter uh, per science, not necessarily all these right here. And it's very compact, looks really nice, and it's kind of a cool concept as well. But I can see in a couple of other places where, where sushi belts might be fun to, to implement. Maybe something like green circuit production, where you sushi in the amount of uh, copper and uh, iron that you use. Uh, since it's a, an equal ratio, uh, an odd ratio, I should say, I think it's what... Uh, uh, 2.5 to 1, 2.5 to 2, 2.5 to 1. What, what is that? I don't remember. Uh, 1 to 1 1.5. Yeah, that's a that's an awkward ratio right there. So uh, I can see Sushi sushi doing well for that, maybe. At least fun for that. Let, let, let's call it that. <laughs> Well, thank you uh, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I've got some uh, other ideas that I want to toy with. Um, the sushi belt science being the first, but there's some other things I want to play with. Some things with trains, uh, some more things with circuits, um, some things with some belts uh, that you may know about if you've watched any of my previous series. But uh, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.